Here's the news. Number one is that Hong Kong airport is open. I mean, we got in. Us and our crew landing about 90 minutes ago with only slight delays coming from the New York area. You can see passengers are coming in. But when you get here, you are still greeted by protest and protesters. In fact, look at the floor. So what's happened, guys? This is the part of the airport yesterday. We saw the pictures. Thousands of protesters. You had to jostle your way through. There were some injuries. In fact, one reporter for the state media, Global Times, was sort of handcuffed by some protesters, apparently. At least that's what the government was saying. And that's why they issued the injunction. In other words, what they said is, okay, you can protest, but this is going to be a safe protest zone. And you can see there's a couple hundred protesters still here. Many are sleeping. They've got their documents. They've got their papers and their posters out here with some of the things we can't show you that they say. Some of the pictures are fairly gory. That said, there is a protest zone here. Now, what we are understanding moments ago is that there is a separate protest happening right now in Kowloon on the mainland just across the bay from Hong Kong. Reuters is reporting that tear gas there has been fired. Very peaceful here at the airport, although this is what greets you when you comes in. But here's the question, guys, is that the government has issued the injunction, said, OK, you can protest, but don't sort of disrupt operations of the eighth largest airport in the world and the fifth largest stock market in the world. The reason we're here, the question becomes this. Where does this go from here? Hong Kong, really just two to three percent of GDP for China, but it punches above its weight, as you well know. It is the sort of the keyhole, if you will, between the East and the West as a financial center. And where do these protests go? What about the financial conditions going forward? You also got to remember, if you're the CEO of a major bank, you've got two things on your mind right now. Number one is Brexit. What happens to London? And now maybe you're thinking about Hong Kong. Do you have to move guys to centers of operations? We're going to be here for the next couple of days talking about the financial impact, showing you real world on the ground impact here right now at the Hong Kong airport. Brian, in the protests moving to Kowloon, as you mentioned, a, a lot of big global banks are based there. Is that kind of the, the goal for these protesters is to, you know, be at the center of finance because they know that is how they get the world to watch? I think the goal right now is twofold, which is number one. I mean, they've got a number of demands. Number one is they would like Carrie Lam, the CEO of the SAR, Special Administrative Region, that is Hong Kong, to resign. Number two is, remember, when, when the transfer occurred in 97, they were given a 50-year extension of certain rights and privileges that were different than mainland Chinese law. We still have 28 years to go. I think the main concern is making sure they get those rights and extensions, and they want a permanent kill of that extradition bill that China tried to push through. That was the main impetus for these protests, which are now entering their 11th week here. I think from an understanding point of view, and listen, to be fair, we just got here. We're going to have to chat with some people over the next couple of days. Hong Kong is one of the major financial centers of the world. Fifth largest stock market, $340 billion in gross domestic product, just on the small island and parts of Kowloon that is Hong Kong. So they understand that Hong Kong punches above its weight globally. It punches above its weight from the Chinese government. It punches above its weight from an international finance perspective. And if there's any indication that that could slow down or shut down, like the airport did, I think that we're going to have to see some kind of a reaction from Beijing and the other Chinese authorities because that market needs to stay open globally in their mind. Obviously, got a lot more, got many more days here. We just got here. And I will say this anecdotally, guys, the airplane was the emptiest flight I've ever flown on internationally. I would say half the plane was empty. And the cabin steward told us that a lot of people had bailed on their tickets at the last minute. The plane, extremely empty. Newark to Hong Kong direct. I would imagine that's happening a lot.